Operation Warp Speed is in full force. A coronavirus vaccine is imminent. But wait, are these vaccines going to be safe? Hmm. We have seen and heard ads for people to go and support testing of these vaccines. Well, nonetheless, there is money to be made in some of these stocks. And let me walk you through the possibilities that are about. Coronavirus is still hot and heavy. Operation Warp Speed in full effect. Everything is pushing towards getting some kind of a vaccine for the coronavirus. Totally understand that. But I've got a story here that says, how and when will we know that a COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective? I understand that the FDA was put into place, the Federal Drug Administration was put into place to help make sure that when drugs go out to market that they've gone through rigorous testing to make sure that they're good and safe. Notice that with Operation Warp Speed, a lot of what the FDA has put into place has been mm, sidetracked a little bit. All right? yeah. So, you know, now that, that I say boo, but you know something, I know that we are looking very hot and heavy for a vaccine. So I say boo, but I do understand why we're going through it. So what is the status of the COVID-19s in human clinical trials? Have you guys, and type in the room, have you guys been seeing or hearing uh, ads on radio and TV about people going to support the trials so that we can help get a vaccine out? Just type a yes or a no in the room. It's out there. Phase three studies are underway. And this is probably the fastest that I've ever seen phase three studies get underway. But for Moderna, that's a stock that I've been hot and heavy on. For Moderna, BNTX, and for Pfizer, three companies that are here uh, are in phase three studies. I talked about seven stocks last week. Hopefully you watched the presentation last week. Seven stocks that are really advancing into getting a vaccine uh, for COVID-19. But here's three that are in phase three right now. And then, you know, each of these vaccine uses the SARS-CoV-2 spike uh, glycoprotein, man, is it glycoprotein, whatever, uh, which the virus uses to infect cells to trigger the immune system to generate protective antibodies and a cellular immune response to the virus. Protective antibodies act by preventing the spike of glycoprotein from attaching the virus to human cells, thereby neutralizing the SARS-CoV-2 -CoV virus cases in COVID-19. Now, I've got a, a legitimate concern I understand why we're pushing to get a, a vaccine. But we start and we put it out to market, you won't know for five or 10 years what the full effects, adverse effects are of these drugs. Now, I'm not trying to say this to scare you. I'm just bringing it to the forefront because somebody's got to talk about it. Somebody's got to put that out there. I know what we're doing and I know it's for the right reasons. But we all know that drugs that go out to market, a lot of times we don't know the full effects until several years after the fact. So I'm just putting that out there just as a concern. Nothing more, nothing less. Not that my opinion is going to change anything. I doubt it very seriously. But that is the elephant in the room. Oh, man, Joey, did you take elephant off? Did we take off elephant? We did, didn't we? I think so. Uh, but that's all right. Um... What else do I have? I do have this. Really? Yeah, I like that. Told you we are going to find a place for that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Moderna's nucle uh, nucleic and acid vaccine, the messenger for RNA, it, I've got the story. The story talks about uh, what have early phase one and uh, phase two shown in humans? Overall, vaccines have triggered a more potent neutralizing antibody response than even that seen in patients recovering from COVID-19. So that's a good thing, right? This has also been the case for Moderna's vaccine currently in phase three trials and for vaccines from CanSino Biologics uh, of Oxford and AstraZeneca. I'm telling you, 
uh, these three companies, specifically Moderna, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer, those are definitely stocks to keep your eyes on uh, for COVID, all right? What side effects have been seen? Physicians have recorded mild to moderate reactions when the subjects were observed up to 28 days after the vaccine. All right, so maybe that's putting some of my concerns to rest. What did I say, though? It's going to take years before we find out um, the full effects of these vaccines. But I think they are needed because we don't want the people who are dying from it. Same thing with the flu, right? We get a flu shot. We get a pneumonia shot. What is that? We get a pneumonia shot. We get a pneumonia shot. We get a flu shot. And I think that as time goes along, we're going to get a pneumonia, a flu, and a COVID-19 shot to go along to protect us, all right? So that's one stock in my corona space, Clorox. Now this is big, Clorox, a lot of people are using Clorox to disinfect stuff. I got Clorox screens, there you you see those right there, Joey? Mm -hmm. I got Clorox microfiber canisters, and and I clean off my desk and all of that stuff. Huh? Wipes. Wipes, you know? And that's a, somebody, Washington, you asked me for a good long-term stock, this is one. This is one. It will be around. And this is actually uh, really rock and rolling due to what's going on um, with the COVID-19. And guess what? It declares a dividend, declares a dollar eleven. That's another reason. Washington, if you're here, tell me that you see this. This is one of a good stock that you want to have long term. And now that it declared a dollar eleven dividend, it makes it more aggressive. Sorry, more attractive to investors. Johnson and Johnson kicks off phase three. COVID-19 vaccine trial. There's another one. All right. Johnson & Johnson is another company. Shares were up 2.3% Wednesday. That was yesterday. Pre-market trading after the healthcare company announced that it's kicking off a large-scale, pivotal, multi-country, multi-country, not multi-county, <coughs> excuse me, but multi-country phase three trial of its COVID-19 J&J in that long number. All right. So that's another company in this space to look at. Another one. This is an intranasal COVID-19. And this is another company. Medic, Medicine Nova. Medic Nova. Medic. Medicine Nova. That's, that's what I said. Medicine Nova. It sounds like Medicine Nova. Medicine Nova. Some men may call me. Well, what is that? That's Mona Lisa. Ah. So I just took Mona Lisa and made it, made it into Medicine Nova. Ah, but it was up 28%. Now, I'm going to tell you that a lot of these COVID stocks will be trades because something comes out about it and it's good, and then something else, you know, and and, and then once it's good, what tends to happen? Profit taking. All right, so some of these trades, some of these coronavirus stocks are trades, and I'm going to show you that more when I analyze some of these stocks. But it went up, uh, that was on Wednesday, on a robust volume, encouraging preclinical data, all right? Results from a mouse study showed that the vaccine-induced high titers, I learned from my wife, that's the right way to say that, titers of serum IgG in... Mucosal, I hate that they use all these, but I don't want to use it. Anyway, it's good. All right, that's all you need to know. It's good data. But understand when a stock like this in that space jumps up 28%, a lot of times you're going to have profit taken the next day. And so those are my stories on coronavirus. All right, let me go take a look at these in my watch list. Let's see where they sit. Uh, There's Johnson & Johnson is the number one as far as my story is concerned by our master indicator, VST, sitting at 1.11, which is the overall looking at relative value, relative safety, and relative timing. Clorox is in this list. Clorox, uh, again, Washington, we're going to take a look at that. There's Pfizer. There's Moderna. There's BNTX and MNOV. So one, two, three, four, five, six stocks in this space. Let's analyze them real quick. Johnson & Johnson, undervalued. We give a value for every stock in our database every day. It's what we feel the stock is currently worth. Johnson is trading at 145 and a value of 176, currently undervalued. Beautiful. Clorox, on the other hand, up is trading at 214 with a value of 143. This stock is over its value. Doesn't make it a bad stock, just means that people are willing to pay a premium. They own the stock. Pfizer's trading at 35, value of 33. The stock is considered to be fairly 
valued. Look at Moderna. This is my hot stock. Uh, Moderna is trading at 65 with a value of 23. This is more of a trade. All right, this stock is overvalued, and I'll show you more information why this is a trade. Bio, Biontech, 63 with a value of 630, way overvalued. Also, a trade, and Medicine Nova, 469, value of 148, also a trade. Now, let me tell you why I think those stocks are trades. Here's our other indicators, relative value, relative safety, relative timing, our master indicator, VST, and an indicator that tells me the stock's ability to withstand long and lengthy price declines. All right, keeping all of that in mind, this is more than just giving you a stock to invest in. This becomes more of a trading system, knowing when to buy, what to buy, and when to sell. Let's talk about what to buy in regards to these stocks. Relative value, the stock's long-term upside potential as compared to a AAA corporate bond. Should this stock over the next one year, can this stock outperform a AAA corporate bond? With relative value above one, the stock should outperform that safer investment of a AAA corporate bond, stock that I would not mind owning long term. Johnson & Johnson is one of them. Relative value at 1.16, above one. Clorox is one of them. Relative value at 1.03. Now, Pfizer, fairly valued, but the upside potential is not there at this time. So Pfizer, even though it's fairly valued, not sure I want to hold this long term. When I go down and I look at Moderna, clearly over its value, relative value at 0.98. Very close, but not close enough. It's not above one. Biontech, look how low the relative value is on it, 0.08. This is strictly a trade. So now it's not only about what to buy, but knowing what the stock type is. This is strictly a trade. And you know that if you buy it, you buy it, you make your money, you get out of it. Medicine Nova with a relative value of 0.44, also way below one. This is strictly a trade. Let's look at another indicator, relative safety. The stock's ability, uh, predictability, and, um, and consistency of financial performance. Does the, do these companies meet or exceed their earnings expectations quarter over quarter, year over year? 1.29. Johnson is a good, safe company. Clorox, 1.15. Clorox is a good, safe company. Pfizer, not nearly as safe. Looking at Moderna, no. BioNTech, no. Medicine Nova, no. These indicators help you to make better decisions, not just news driving the stock, but information that you can, useful information to make better decisions. You got to know what to buy. Is the stock in an uptrend? Johnson & Johnson right now, relative timing below one, stock's not in an uptrend. It's fundamentally sound, but not going up right now. So what do you do with Johnson & Johnson? You wait for a better buying opportunity. You know that long term, you don't want, you, you're not, you, you're okay to hold it. And you know that it's a safe stock. It's just going down in price right now. Clorox, also, same kind of scenario. The fundamentals, RV and RS are good. Relative timing at 0.96. Stock is considered to be in a downtrend. And all of the other uh, four stocks that I said were trades with the exception of Pfizer, uh, MRNA, BNTX, MNOV are trades. Look at these stocks. No fundamentals behind them. RT below one, no fundamentals, RT below one, no fundamentals, RT below one, no fundamentals, RT below one. Now that these stocks continue to make the news, just because they make the news doesn't mean it's the right time to buy. Those three stocks right here are strictly trades. Everybody in the room, let me know that you understand what I just said. Everybody in the room, let me know that you understand what I just said. There are opportunities to make money in these stocks. Some, like Johnson & Clorox, I don't mind owning for a little bit longer of a time. But Moderna, BNTX, and MNOV are more likely to be trades. Do you guys understand that? And that's important because for anybody who's willing to move from the sidelines and take a trial to the software, this is where the value add comes into place. This is where we go beyond just saying, hey, here's a stock, go buy it. You get that information from your news, from your emails, all that stuff. We go above and beyond that, and 99 cents is well worth this kind of information. All right, so that's all important. Now, um, let's go take a look at these graphs real quick. Right-click, view the stock graph. Let's go see. 
So Johnson and Johnson, this goes to Washington. Johnson and Johnson right now, Washington, bouncing off a level of support, I'd wait. I bouncing off a level of support, I'd wait. Let's go look at Clorox. Johnson here we uh, Washington here we go. I like Clorox long term. I'll put this on a one year a uh, one year. Look at that. Washington. That's a beautiful looking equity curve over the last year. What do you do when the stock gets hit like this, but you still want to hold it long term? You know why? Because look at earnings. Look at the earnings on that stock. This is a good long term stock that I wouldn't mind holding. But when this happens, this is where options come into play. This is where options come into play. Learning to put some protective measures on a stock that you're trying to hold long term. That's important. Am I thinking about getting a Clorox now? Oh, the stock is coming out of the downtrend. I can put a 20-day exponential moving average uh, on the stock, and I'd wait for the stock to break above that 20-day before I take, a, take advantage of it. But Cl Clorox is a stock that I don't mind owning long term. Put this back on the three-month graph. Pfizer currently below it at 20-day moving average. Love the earnings on it. Again, this is another stock that I would wait for a good opportunity, uh, wait for better buying opportunity. Remember, MRNA, more of a trade. I trade it up when it's going up. When it's not, right now the stock is below the 20-day exponential moving average. I wouldn't have it right now. BNTX, I wouldn't have it right now. Currently below, let's make that line a little darker. Change the style so that you can see it a little bit more. Yeah, I, right now the stock is below. Remember, this is trade. As long as the stock is above something like a 20-day exponential, I'd get it. If it's below, I'm not. Same thing with M-O-N-A, uh, M-N-O-V. This is really an erratic stock right here, but it's in the news. All right. Does anybody have any questions on those stocks? All right, Thio, thiodomide removed for pregnant mothers was used to control nausea. Still used for other indications today, though. All right, Steve. Uh, Joff says, boy, did I get bypassed on KLDO when jumped my eight point. Uh, stop putting stocks in yet. I told you, don't put them in yet. I'm not telling you to do, ready to do that. Any advice for the beginner in options trading? We do have a course called the Options Jump Starter Course. Uh, once you become a subscriber that you can take, it will definitely talk to you about the basics of the option, buying calls and buying puts.